Shalom people, this is Brother Lyles coming at you with another video. And I want to talk about present day blindness. Present day blindness in our people. Um, I'm going to come from the book of John. And I um, got a, a book that I want to... Uh, coincide with this scripture reading talking about our present day blindness it says here John the ninth chapter um, starting at verse 1 and this is about the man that was born uh, blind he said and as Yeshua passed by he saw a man which was blind from his birth and his disciples asked him saying master who did sin this man or his parents that he was born blind? Yeshua answered, said, Neither has this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of Yah should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. For as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had dust smoking, he spat on the ground and made a clay of spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. And he said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Solomon, 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 which by interpretation sent, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came, seeing the neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him that was born blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes open? He answered and said, A man that is called Yeshua made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Solomon and wash. And I went and washed and I received sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. They brought to the Pharisees him that four time was blind. And it was the Sabbath day when Yeshua made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said, And he put clay upon my eyes, and I washed and do see. Therefore said one of the Pharisees, This man is not of Yah, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division amongst them. Then said, they said unto the blind man again, What saith thou of him that he has opened the eyes? He said, He is a prophet. But the, the Yahudim did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son whom ye say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but by what means he now seeth, we know not. Oh, who has opened his eyes? We know not. He is of age. Ask him. He shall speak for himself. These words spake his, spake his parents because they feared the Yahudim, for the Jew Yahudim had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was uh messiah he should be put out of the synagogue therefore said his parents he is of age ask him then again called they the man that was blind and said unto him give yah the praise we know that this man is a sinner he answered and said whether he be a sinner or no i know not one thing i know out that whereas I was blind, now I see. Then said they to him again, What did he to thee? How open he thine eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and ye did not hear. Wherefore would ye hear it again? Will ye also be his disciples? Then they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. He knew, we know that Yah 
spake unto Moses, but as for this fellow, we know not from which he is. The man answered and said unto them, Here, why, herein is a marvelous thing that ye know not from which he is, and yet he has opened my eyes. Now we know that Yah hear not sinners, but if any man be a worshipper of Yah and do of his will, him he hear. Since the world began, was it not heard that any man opened the eyes of one that was born blind? If this man were not of Yah, he could do nothing. Then they answered and said unto him, Thou was altogether born in sins. And thus thou teach us, and they cast him out. He sure heard that they had cast him out, and when he had found him, he said unto him, Do thou believe on the Son of Yah? He answered and said, Who is he, Master, that I might believe on him? And Yeshua said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh of thee. And the Master said, And he said, Master, I believe, and he worshipped him. And Yeshua said, For judgment I am coming to this world, that they which see not might see, and they which see might be made blind. And some of the Pharisees which were with him heard these words, and said unto him, Are we blind also? Yeshua said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, we see, therefore your sin remaineth. Wow. <clears throat> present day blindness. The present day blindness of both those that enslaved us and our present day blindness. The present day blindness of our oppressors. Uh, came about f long before they uh, put us into slavery as for who uh, they think uh, they are 325 AD um, the taking over of the message of the good news by the uh, Constantine and Western powers um, began a a dark chapter in the spreading of the message because we know that wherever the Christian missionaries went, the military industrial complex was not far behind to enslave those that they had now told that they must submit themselves to uh, Yah and if they submitted themselves to Yah that meant they had submitted themselves to them because they thought that they were uh, chosen of Yah to enslave all the world but uh, as we see with the succeeding splits and everything that happened in the quote unquote Christian church that was under the control of the, the Gentiles. They created that uh, before it was the way, the truth, and the, the light. Uh, the kingdom that um, was without observation, no denomination. It was never meant to be that. It was never meant to be the basilicas and the cathedrals and the um, um, the rings and the crosses and the uh, uh, the robes and all that stuff was not of Yah. It never was. Uh, read what Yeshua said about ceremonialism with the phylacteries and the the robes with the the extended borders and all this stuff. And even the temple, you know, destroy the temple in three days. I'll raise it. And he was talking about his body, not the temple of Herod. This is what we. We had come up with, but then when Protestantism split away, he thought it was different. But it was just as vicious and mean as the Catholic Church because uh, 
Protestantism was just a, a daughter of Rome. And we know that all the horrendous things that happened to our forefathers under the Protestant, Christ, uh, Catholic and Protestant churches and Islam and Ta Talmudic Judaism, all the uh, things that has happened to us and continue to happen to us. But even amongst some of uh, uh, them that were in these things, they would arise men that would tell the truth about this uh, this thing called Christendom. They would let people know that um, this was not the way to go, that Christianity was not a religion. It was what supposed to be regeneration and a, a way of life. And one of the guys that I, I really respected amongst the um, Europeans that told the truth about uh, what uh, uh, European Christianity was all about uh, uh, was Soran Kierkegaard. He was a, a, a Danish philosopher uh, that lived in in Denmark uh, from the early 1800s to about 1855. That's that's um, um, during the time that Denmark uh, was still tentatively in the slave trade. We know that uh, Denmark had some slave castles and stuff. Supposedly they they um, discontinue uh, abolish slavery in 18, 1782 supposedly but they didn't free the, the the slaves that was on those islands to 18 um, 48 I think it was and who knows probably after that they still had some kind of form of slavery so that's don't even you know believe everything we read it read in the press but Kierkegaard, uh, you know, was born in a time when the, the Danish state church, that if you was a Danish citizen, you were officially, the day you was born, made a citizen of the Danish state church. And so you became, by state proclamation, a Christian. Uh, Kierkegaard, um, whose uh, father at had uh, requested that he become a pastor, trained to be a pastor. He, he, and when he got his theological degree, he was, but then he changed his mind because he could see uh, what he was getting ready to go into was not what he his faith was showing him it, this thing should be. And so he opted instead to become a philosopher. And but in in his philosophy would be mainly concerned with the Christian life in Denmark because he could see that these people were not believers in Yeshua by their action that there was just a form of godliness but no power and so he went about uh, to do acts of uh, madness a lot of times on Sunday to try to be controversial and get discussion started with these people about the way that they would act on Sunday but throughout the week that they and of course you know slave trade that's the biggest giveaway that this is not a Christian nation um but he was trying to wait now I don't I don't know if you know he had his his leanings on slavery I really don't know because I don't think he ever traveled outside the country but he, to me, uh, got it right on the state of European Christianity, supposedly, at that time. To me, it was just like the story that I read in John 9 about the Pharisees seeing a man that was blind and trying to accuse Yeshua of something that he didn't do. And the blind man that had lost his sight not only did he have better sight than those that had had their quote-unquote sight all the time 
um, he um, got it right in his explanation what Yeshua did better than them because just like Yeshua said when I read the scripture he said um, you uh, say that um, uh, where is it at he said I'm coming to the world that those that which see not might see and that those which see might be my blind and they was like uh, are we blind right and that's what the Pharisees said he said no because if you had been blind then I would have healed you but because you said you're not blind you're gonna rem you're gonna remain in your sin and they didn't understand him and what Kierkegaard was trying to do he was trying to get the Danish people which to me was not just the case of Denmark it was a case of Christianity worldwide Protestant Catholic whatever that they were blind but didn't see that they were blind they thought they could they were seeing okay but they were blind they were blind with all the human suffering that was being caused that they could not see what they were doing they were blind and in sin but care to God and, and, and some others which would try to wake them up. People like care to God, Sir God, care to God and John Wesley. Uh, this is this is uh, what, what I mean right here. Present day blindness. Right. L listen what uh, care to God said right here. Um. So communication is qualified by reflection and this is a book uh, I, I studied when I was in Shaw University it was called Existentialism from Dottariosky to Sartre by a gentleman named uh, Walter Kaufman and he got excerpts from Cure to God's uh, works in here and this is this is just uh, excerpt this is an indirect in communication the communication communicator is characterized by reflection therefore he is negative not one who says that he himself is a Christian in an extraordinary figure or even lays claim to revelations all of which answers the immediacy and direct communication but on the contrary one who even affirms that he is not a Christian that is to say the communicator stands behind the other man helping him negatively for whether he actually succeeds in helping someone is another question the problem itself is a problem of reflection to become a Christian when one is a Christian of sorts so he's saying if you think that you a Christian of sort how can you become a Christian that is the problem you got to become almost unsaved in order to be saved because if you was born in a, a lot of those European countries back then and even America you was considered to be a quote-unquote Christian because of your church membership and you know this is something that would I believe has been passed on to us and that we coming out of slavery still had a deep deep connection with Yah but as we got um chance to we started developing a form of uh godliness like we had in um when 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 before y'all kicked us out of the land and just like we did with um uh uh, the, the 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 practicing Yah's law, statutes, and commandments. I don't want to say Judaism, because Judaism was never created by Yeshua. That was created by our forefathers uh, to get into these religious exercises and everything that made one feel that he was reaching to Yah with his own 
human effort. Um, what uh, Tear to God was saying was Jewish <sighs> people had to uh, be brought face to face with the fact that they, many of them had never been confronted with repentance, repenting of their sins, knowing that they were um, their righteousness was without was not but filthy rags. And so when we came out of, out of slavery with the uh, some of the things that we learned, unfortunately we started developing a form of uh oh uh, uh, um quote unquote go uh godliness but denying the power also until you know the holiness movement of the late eighteen hundred and um Azusa Street with uh William Seymour and that revived us in indeed the church world for a little, little while until I guess the Pentecostal movement succumbed to uh, the organizational spirit as I said and it and it started dissolving into powerlessness itself and um, you know uh, we um, have a form another form of religion that was denying the power but it was saying it was in the power and I know that for my soul so here we are with this um, quote unquote Hebrew awakening which I believe awakening is different than the movement but people are trying to co-opt the awakening and make it into a movement and what they end up doing is just like with anything, they can de they can deaden it uh, because the organ is part of your body and it's living, but the organization is a is a dead thing. It doesn't have any life in it, and so um, that's why we need to pray for Yah's holy ruach to come. And move on us as an individual and collectively, and uh, it unify us instead of us trying to unify ourselves. Right? We really need to uh, say, Yah, please help those that are in this thing that have not had the new birth, who have not been born again. Just like we would ask in the, the quote-unquote Christian church that those that come in that uh, had not had any re regeneration but become good at Christian ease, saying Christian things, doing Christian things, but outside of that not having any renewed life where they, they want to have been changed to want to do good and not bad. See, that's the problem. You got people who were in quote unquote Christianity that never had they want to they want to meaning I want to do good. They had never had that change. They come into the uh, understanding of us being people, and they, they basically continue on in, in the same thing. They don't have a desire to want to do right. They can do the outward form right. For a little while, actually, they'll do it for a little while, but then they'll go back to, you know, their old habits. Just like he said, a dog goes back to his vomit and a sow back to his waller. And unfortunately, we have that. Um, but we are living, thank the Most High, in a time where it's not depend. All we can do, which we should all been doing anyway, is just um live it out you know live it out and be led by the ruach and who you give the the message of salvation or whatever to and um uh, let y'all do the the increase or the decrease but 
Now I think it's at an accelerated pace. See, um, Kierkegaard at the time that he was trying to revive the 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 uh, I want to say revive because I don't know if it was ever been alive, but he could see it was dying. And in fact, I think it was the late 1800s that the the death knell was rung for quote unquote. European Christianity that by the time World War Two, well, actually by the, the the end of World War One, the belief in anything in Europe uh, it was totally annihilated uh, by Darwinism. It was totally annihilated by okay, we had this First World War and we were all supposed to be in Christian nations, so which Christian nation is going to win the war I think uh, whatever little bit of quote unquote Christianity that was there was gone it was it was dying in the 1800s and indeed when me and my family were stationed in Germany you seen these big Catholic cathedrals big uh, Protestant cathedrals that were were empty they were museum places where people went in, they had these lot, a lot of them had these big giant pipe organs in there, and they were just relics. People were not using them, you know. Um, and that could be seen with the treatment of the European nations of the Afri of their African colonies. That if the people could do do that, they definitely had a form of of uh, a, a godliness but no power that's why when existentialism and new thought and all this stuff came along uh, people latched hold to it you know because they had been having a form of, of, of godliness for a very long time that's why I laugh at these uh, um, Calvinist reform Calvinist Dutch reform or whatever when you look at the deadness of of Switzerland, the place where uh, where Calvin and Ziggly Zig, and all these people, why isn't it, why isn't it strong over there? What, what what did the Dutch what Dutch Reform theology do for South Africa? Oppressed people, because just like Kierkegaard said, these people thought that they weren't. They they thought that they could see, but they were blind. But because they was unable to see that they were blind, they remained in where it was in care to God. It upset him greatly that his nation was like that. He was one of the few that was just like Wesley. Wesley seen what, what was going on with slavery. He understood, man, this is plague, right? So we were, it had not been, I believe, for black people coming out of slavery that had, had, had made a connection with Yah, despite us have, still being under the curse for uh, disobeying Yah and uh, crucifying his son. Yet we st enough of us was able to catch hold to Yah and re-energize um, uh, European whatever you want to call it Christianity a little bit of it but most of it would you know dry out real quick because as long as you continue to um, not admit that you're first of all aligned for some of the stuff that you were doing to other peoples and that you continue to oppress a people after you said you had you know freedom in the civil war lies and all these things that were being done not only by them but the european nations that had carved up not only africa but the rest of the world it was them still in blindness they was unwilling to say that they were blind, therefore their sin remained. And and that's why I said when Azusa came along, um but what um uh Seymour it it gave it breathed a little life into first the the black 
black uh, believers, churches, whatever, and then to some of the poor whites. But again, as the organization of it came in and we started following the patterns of the religious services of those that enslaved us and organized our stuff into which understand I understand it's got to be some order or whatever but when you turn the organ into organization an organ is a a a a a, a, a body part something that's a lie the organization is dead we can, we can start seeing the the death nail of um our people uh, may, having a chance to wake up out of our sleep, but what has happened is, in every uh, in every age, Yah has some people that will uh, that he 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 can deal with because they have a a, 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 a somewhat. Uh, uh, understanding that this is not the way things need to be meaning they understand hey I'm blind I need somebody to show me what is give me sight to what is actually going on and I believe that's why a lot of us that had came out of the quote unquote Christian church one of those that said hey we blind we're not seeing things the right way um, somebody please give us sight and y'all Start taking the scales off of our eyes to things around the world, but not just secular things, but spiritual things. But see, that's what's that's what is wrong with being conscious. But without Yah, consciousness, it you, it's just not gonna last long because it has no, it has no out, it has no power. To help you free yourself from the demonic, that although the demonic can give you um, uh, knowledge and everything, it will not give you knowledge for your soul to be revived and give you knowledge for your eternal life. And therefore, that's what was so good about. Uh, after all this health and wealth stuff that was going on in the 90s and the 2000s and the wholesale exodus of a lot of people away from that uh, saying it's got to be something different but it can't be this quote unquote Christian church and then the awakening happened where y'all open our eyes first to the fact that a lot of stuff that we have been taught was not true and, and that the pagan roots of quote unquote Christianity and then all the other stuff that was going on in the world that that have been uh, being revealed, but then all, then the, the, the coup de gras was, hey, the reason that this thing is off balance is because the people that say they the people ain't the people. The people that are the people are blind. But then y'all started to do what to open our eyes and reveal to us. Uh, not that we didn't see Yeshua. Yeah, we seen Yeshua, but Yeshua had, like you said, I believe he, he he had blinded us to this this understanding because it wasn't necessity a necessity that we um, know that we are the people in order to be born again. But we were wrestling with we were we weren't wrestling with our soul salvation when we was in. It. We was wrestling with what is the purpose of all this? Why is the this stuff that they call Christianity? Why is it being operated like this? Why is it not following scripture? Then we understood why because we didn't have um, we wasn't supposed to we wasn't the mouthpieces for Christ, Christendom. It was white Christianity and we was just along for the ride but then we understood that our, that our cares and concerns well, that because we had originally been the people that was driving this thing, but because we was not living what we was saying, y'all moved it out of our arena and put it in somebody else's arena. Uh, and but now he was trying to now that we was waking up to fact that the quote unquote Christian church was not the answer and 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 that. It, we, it was it was some blindness in some of the 
Bible or understanding that Yah said, now I can allow you to um, uh, see that you are the people because you got the priority f straight first that salvation through my son is the most important thing. So I understand that you're not going to go off the rails once you understand that you are the people. You are not going to be swayed off the path. Maybe a little bit because you know this stuff when you first come into it, it does knock you for a loop. But you quickly get back over and understand, yeah, it's good that I know that we are the people. But we, we understand that just like the Gentiles, we had to be grafted back in to the natural branch but that we were a natural branch it was not a wild one and therefore if we you know we we've been grafted in already but the only thing is now we understand that we we were the natural branch and that that puts would put a little bit more i say effort in us because we understand the position that we had been in because we didn't deny Yeshua and then we found out about the curses and, and all this other stuff and then, and it made sense why we were being treated the way we were that that present day blindness would be taken away by the awakening but that some some somehow some way there are people that are still blind that still will weasel their way into an assembly or a camp, but that's where the awakening not being a movement is so good because you don't have to be part of a, you know, and, and the thing about it is um, it's easy to tell those that are in, that are blind, they'll tell you, I don't believe in Yeshua being the son of Yah, I don't believe, you know, they and they got a lot of these uh you know doctrines that uh you know these people that are in still in the christian church say see 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 but if you tell anybody that is a believer in us being a people and our and and our our true believers in yeshua they'll tell you we don't agree with we don't agree with that polygamy stuff we don't believe in that polygamy stuff we don't believe in that flat earth stuff we don't believe in that uh uh, Holy Spirit being a female stuff. We don't believe that uh, in that Joseph is Yeshua's father stuff. We don't believe in that. That's preposterous. We, but then again, we also don't believe in the hierarchical system of the Christian church. We don't believe in the word Christian because they wasn't called Christians. We don't believe in the extra cathedral of the Catholic church. We don't believe in the uh the uh communion and the baptism saving you baptism regeneration we don't believe in that we don't believe that the the communion or eucharist or whatever we don't even believe that there is such a thing as communion that was just something that was made up but that that what they were doing they were th those that were in yeshua Mashiach that were believers Hebrew believers and Gentile believers in their joint congregations, they were taking the Passover meal. That's just, it wasn't doing a thing called Easter. That wasn't. That came later on when Catholicism took over in 325 and they replaced the, the Passover meal, which he said, as often as you do it, which was that one time a year. They wasn't, when they said that they was, they was, they was going from house and the breaking of the bread. Um, they was talking about okay. Um, uh, um, um, how can I say it? They were talking about the yearly breaking of the bread during the the Passover time. Or it, it all could be the the meal that they, when they was doing the meal, right? So, in fact, let's, let's, go, let's just go here to see what Google has to say about that. Because that's something I always, um, something I 
wanted to Okay, so mm -hmm. okay, yeah, okay, so. It has been assumed, okay, here it is. It has been assumed that all references to breaking bread in the New Testament was referring to a common meal and never to the Lord's Supper. As a result, it's denied that the breaking of bread and to break bread refers to, okay, later told us. It's obviously a common meal because it's not yet been established. So they continue to summarize the practice of the brother and usually the spiritual nature of any item. It does not refer to just any bread but a specific bread. This is mm, There's nothing afraid. Okay. Okay, so when they were talking in Acts about them breaking bread, um, that was just talking about a, a common communal meal that they would do. Now, when you get to Corinthians, where it talks about the quote-unquote Lord's Supper, it was talking about the Passover meal that they were that they were uh, that the 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 Naz church the, the sect of the Nazarenes which they were called not the church and the, of the way which they were called that they they were doing to remember and they remember it but because the the, the common practice of the the Hebrew Gentile assemblies was that they some of them did follow still follow some of the feast of uh, Yah and one of them was Passover the breaking of the unleavened bread and the cup and but this time when they they, they didn't celebrate it for uh, salvation they celebrated it this time as a uh, a remembrance of Yeshua that uh, when he came back again that he would have the Passover meal with him because that's what he said he was going to do when he came back. He didn't call it communion. He didn't call it the uh, uh, what we call it today. It was still to him and is, is to this day the Passover meal uh, with the, the, the breaking of the and so uh, this thing that they use to say this is why uh, Sunday worship was instituted is not true. It's just not true. You can go back and look at historical records that the 
the the breaking of the bread that they were talking about and the wine in first corinthians was the passover that's why they said the lord's supper when which was the night the path the the the, the, the Passover night when they broke the bread and and they drank the wine or whatever that's what it was talking about it was not talking about and and also that helped them coincide their false belief of Easter or Easter which they brought about to none of this stuff is true it's not true and they understand that it that is the case. Um, but again, that's where the, the the blindness came because one of the things that was incumbent upon you staying a good member of these Protestant and Catholic churches, European churches, and now black people churches, you, you need to make sure you get the communion uh, uh, once a month whenever they, they did it and you had to be baptized or whatever into that and then you good no matter what you do. If you do that and you communion and you and then of course when they came in with the paying of the tithes, then you could be you'll be good. It, it wasn't nothing else for you the way you can just do whatever it is that you wanted to do. But Kierkegaard understood that this was the death nail of well, it would never it actually wasn't a death nail, it was never a lie that the, the European churches didn't have any um tied to what uh christian that's why they was able to do the things they was able to do around the world because there was a form of uh godliness but denial the power of but now we who have followed that same mode of the quote-unquote christianity uh uh are in that but we are waking up we are waking up we are waking up to and we and 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 the us understanding that we are the people is the, the icing on the top of the cake because it gives us understanding that why we us who broke away from that uh, ridiculousness understood that man this is why I felt this way this never was supposed to be this was take was hijacked just like our identity was hijacked the the uh, the speaking of the the good news was hijacked from us too but that was it. Uh, our problem because of the way that we, re, you know, refuse to exalt Yeshua, and so he allowed uh, the, the, the Romans, he allowed them to take it over into uh, turn it into this conglomeration, and therefore those that really wanted to know who Yah was were actually literally had to fight against that system that system that satan had built and that if you really wanted to and, and you can tell that and any any person that really have loved y'all that have been in a, a church or similar or whatever where they was wholesale sold out to the system they would always find themselves at odds with the system those that really wanted to follow yeshua yes it's always been that way but present day blindness is still the majority that the Bible said there are going to be many that's going to follow that broad way. And there's going to be few that find the narrow way. So I hope that lesson, this lesson helps you to come up out of that present day blindness. You got to be born again. You got to ask Yah to save you. Um, you got to understand that you're born in sin and shaped in iniquity uh, and you gotta have the new birth so um if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you uh, please share it and please um subscribe be blessed